Oh, there's a rare sight, a turbo that's not in the pool and, well, I can't say dry, but dry compared to what the swap monster usually looks like. Turbo, get out of there. What are you doing? Got this beautiful pathway right there for you. You gotta go right through the bushes, huh? Always keeping things entertaining. You just bumped your head right into that thing. Anyways, hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here. How's it doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great, sitting outside a little plant spotlight time. Haven't had one of those in a while. I also just realized that I'm sitting on the glider over here. The tripod out here for a reason. No <laughs> reason to be making anybody motion sick. Oh, so, who loves a Gerber daisy? Gerber, Gerbera, Gerbera. I don't, I don't care how you say it. Gerbera. We all know what we're talking about here. The Gerbera Jamesonii. This is a cultivar or a hybrid of common Gerber daisy that's so beautiful. Lovely spring plant. So I know some of y'all down in Florida, it's a winter garden plant. Well, last summer I was at the Home Depot and they had these Gerber daisies called Easy Daisies. And that is what I have right here. You can see them, Easy Daisies, the daisy that never stops. When I read the claims on the back of the pot, I had to get one. Really wanted to try it out, see how it would do. Whenever a new plant comes out and there are claims to it being like ultra tough or just above and beyond the typical of what you would get from the normal variety of that plant, I really like to kind of put them through the ringer so I can report back and tell y'all how the plant did. So what we're here to talk about right now are these easy daisies and also the uh, garden, garden, Garvinia, Garvinia, that's what it is, the Garvinia daisies. Talking about those two, or maybe talking about the same thing at the same time. I don't know, we'll get into that in a minute. Easy daisies are a revolutionary product from years of quality European breeding, unlike traditional Gerbera daisies. Plants that only flower in early spring, easy daisy varieties flower forever. Not only do they have a profusion of blooms all season long, but they're the biggest flowers we've ever seen on a Gerbera daisy. I know I said Gerbera is beautiful colors, massive flowers, and an unending supply of them. What's not to love? Easy Daisy adds cheerful bursts of color to patio. Yeah. Sounds great, right? And then also over here, it has some gardening tips, excellent cut flower, cut them near the base. And then it says Easy Daisy, available exclusively at the Home Depot. 18 to 24 inches high, 12 to 18 inches wide, full sun, blooms continuously whenever temperatures are above freezing. Okay, sounds great, right? You understand why I picked one up and I was like, hey, I gotta give these a try. It seemed worthwhile to give it a try, be able to come back and talk about them this year. These sound like some really great things to have in an improved Gerbera daisy, right? Because typically where I live, the daisies, they just really fizzle out during the summertime. The flowers start to fade. The main issue is the crown rotting out and different types of funguses and molds growing. So you have to go in, keep the crown open with pruners and make sure that light can get in there and there's a good amount of airflow. And then when it just gets really hot and humid, I generally have to kind of treat them like I would a pansy and move them into more shade and then hope that they have enough foliage left on them for them to rebound in the springtime. Not springtime, fall time. And get some fall color out of them. They're cute plants. That's mostly worth all that work. But the one that I grew last year, I did nothing with it. And it kept flowering all the way until frost. I didn't touch it. I set it down over here along the wall where I had a lot of annuals and things that needed to be planted and just left it. It was in line where it would get hit by some misters and it got watered from time to time. I didn't go in and deadhead or do anything. All that of course being intentional so could report back and tell y'all how it did. And it did well considering I didn't really do anything with it. I didn't repot it. Like I said I didn't go in and prune out any of the old spent flowers. It's a good idea with the Gerbera daisies to get in there and trim those down as close as you can into the crown when the flowers start to fade. You want to keep things nice and open. Yeah, I didn't do that and it did okay. Kept flowering, still had a good amount of foliage on it in the fall time and still had some flowers on it in the fall time. It just kept shooting them out left and right. And I suppose really the only other aspect to add on to that that I noticed just through observation was that the flowers were most prolific when the nighttime temperatures started to cool off but it still is sending out flowers sporadically throughout the summertime. Oh, it's getting dark. Did I wait too long? I think it might be getting too late to film a video. Uh-oh. Talk about a stinking cute plant too. Look at those flowers. They're just adorable and a profusion of blooms. All these right here coming off of one plant. Cooler temperatures, so that makes sense. It's cooler right now. And the growers recommend through tissue culture when they send them out to other growers to get them going that they uh, have a cooler temperature for them to set bud. So knowing that, I'd say it's not unfair, unreasonable to assume that they're going to have that heavier flower set if you purchase them 
in the mid springtime or whenever your temperatures are cooler. Just my inference though, based off the grower's guide and then me noticing last year that it had a lot of flowers and then they kind of dwindled down, but it still flowered and then it had a lot more when temperatures cooled off. But again, I didn't go in and prune the flowers off. I would imagine if you were to stay on top of that, that that would make a big difference as far as keeping the, you know, the power, all the energy in the plant to keep producing more flowers. That's where things get a little bit more interesting. When I was going through online, just looking up the easy daisies from Home Depot, trying to find some more information, they're really, I, I, I couldn't find anything. I don't know much about these as far as Home Depot's version of these plants. It says it's an exclusive from them. It was a little bit odd to have your own exclusive line of plants and absolutely nothing online, at least not of right now, nothing easy to find. I couldn't find anything about these plants. Sorry, I keep getting distracted. The dog has a seashell over there. Turbo, no, that's not for you. You better stop. Here's the thing though. I do recall a few years ago coming across a Gerber daisy online that was supposed to be more heat tolerant, more resistant. To the diseases and was supposed to flower profusely spring through fall. I did some digging and found the uh, Garvinia, which is a European hybrid, which is what it says there on the back of these pots that does all the same things and has the same sizes and the flowers look the same as these. So maybe the same plant? Can't say for sure, just speculating, but I think so. Really nothing weird or unusual about that. Lots of places will pay for the license to sell a plant that's been hybridized by somebody else and give it their own name. So it's totally possible. It's what makes the most sense to me. It doesn't really matter. We could go through and talk about the Garvinias. They sound really awesome. They also, they, the description is pretty much the same as what these are down here. It's not word for word, but the general idea is the same thing which is great because it means that you don't have to have a Home Depot to get them. Monrovia has them listed on their website, the Garvinia series that is, so you can get them from probably, hopefully, maybe your local nursery. It's always great to support them. It just means more widely available. So that's all that is. There's not really much else to say. I just wanted to show off the fun, pretty Gerber daisies. Aren't they nice? So pretty. And there was only one extra bit of information that I found useful from reading about the Garvinias versus trying to find basically nothing on the easy daisies here and that was that the garvinias are supposed to be hardy to zone seven which is fantastic that's a whole nother growing zone compared to your regular just gerbera the jamesonii your regular gerber daisies I'm on the line of 6a 6b but i think i'll probably give some of them a try in the ground and just throw a bunch of mulch over I and mean, if the gingers and bananas and palms and everything are doing okay Maybe these will too. I don't know, but I like that. Feel less wasteful. Oh, well, maybe they'll be around next year too. I don't know, hopefully. Or the Easy Daisies. They're just splayed out on a table at the store. No names for the different varieties. <laughs> or in the Wobbly Tripod, try and make something beautiful and a dog runs underneath it. I tried to pick up one of all the colors that they had there so we could have a look at them. I think they're beautiful. The one I had last year was fun to grow. I'm really looking forward to seeing how these do this year, at least the ones that I keep. Some are going to some friends and family members. Yeah, again, that's all there is to it. Just a fun little plant spotlight. Comment down below. Let us know if you have any fun tips, tricks, or suggestions to grow on them. I do have a video on care that's a few years old, but I'll link it down below just for the regular type Gerber daisies, not for these. To keep these looking their best, I would still treat these the same way I've treated my other Gerber daisies with the exception of not worrying about moving them into a part shade to shade location when it gets really, really hot outside. So like I said, the one I had last year, it did just fine. Could have done better if I had taken like appropriate care of it, but it did pretty well. And I suppose I should explain by hot and humid, I mean, generally like mid nineties to lower one hundreds Fahrenheit. I'm in St. Louis, Missouri. We have pretty, pretty hot and humid intense summers. Not useful just to say I'm in 6A, 6B, right? Because that could mean a lot of different things as far as summer heat goes. So that's pretty good that these did okay. The, the one I had did okay with that kind of heat and kept flowering and didn't have to do anything with it. I would imagine if I did keep on top of like the pruning and stuff like that, it would have done even better. But the fact that I didn't do any of that and it still kept flowering throughout the heat and throughout the summer and then was beautiful again when the nighttime temperatures cooled off probably around well, i don't know mid-august it's still warmer nighttime temperatures but just not like hot humid evenings in the 80s and that's great i love it oh, and the flowers to me seem smaller than what you would normally see on a gerbera daisy but the description down there said that they were big that uh, i don't really know about that they do have very nice long stems so it'd be good for cutting but the flowers themselves seem more petite but look at the profusion there's so many of them i don't even care about that could also very well just be a time of year thing sometimes cooler weather means smaller flowers 
I don't really recall the flowers being any bigger during the summer though, with the one that I grew last year. So maybe they're just smaller flowers. They're still a good size, so that doesn't really matter. Still cute, still pretty. All right, hope everybody's doing well. Having a great day and a great life and everything's just going absolutely beautifully for you. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.